There's a really famous quote from George Orwell's Animal Farm, which goes, all ZDDPs are equal, but some are more equal than others. Now, the reason for this is because there are many different types of ZDDP. Now, why should this be of interest to us? Well, ZDDP is a really important molecule in the lubricants world, mainly because it's a multifunctional additive that provides anti-wear protection as well as antioxidant properties. But the main reason it's so important is that it does so at an extremely low price point, right? So as far as you know, price to performance ratio, there's still nothing that really comes close. And that's pretty amazing considering that this molecule was developed during World War II and has been in use ever since. Now there are, if you like, different flavors of ZDDP. Um, and that arises largely from the fact that it has these four R functional groups that are bolted to the ends. Now R here is really a substitution for any kind of molecule that you want. It could be a carbon chain, it could be a silicone chain, it could be a fluorinated chain. Really, we can attach whatever we want to these oxygens. The other thing is that the length of those chains could vary greatly. Maybe we have a carbon chain that's two carbons long, 20, 200, 2000, right? What that effectively means is that there are an infinite number of different theoretical ZDDPs. Now in practice, none of these things are true. Take the carbon chain length, for example. It tends to be, you know, between two and let's say 20 carbon chains long. Um, we don't tend to get a lot of the exotic varieties like silicones and fluorinated compounds. We tend to just get standard carbon chains. And it's also not true that there are an infinite number of these because, you know, in practice, we have to manufacture them at scale and we have to make it economic. So for those reasons, the lubricant additive companies tend to only manufacture a certain number of types of ZDDP. Now, let's talk about the main different groups because you've probably heard the term primary and secondary ZDDP. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if I attach what I would call, a, you know, a straight carbon chain, that would be called an alkyl group. And I could do that to both of these oxygens. Right, now what I'm showing here is what is called a primary alkyl group. And the reason for that is because if I substituted one of the hydrogens on the first carbon, then this would be called a secondary alkyl group. So a secondary alkyl group is one in which the first carbon has another carbon attached to it. Right? That's the, the, the basics of the chemistry terms. So this top one here would re represent a primary alkyl group, which would give us a primary ZDDP. The second alkyl group is called a secondary alkyl group, which would give us a secondary ZDDP. Now, these are not the only flavors of ZDDP. If we were to substitute an aromatic ring, for example, this would give us an aryl ZDDP. Right. So there are a couple of different types. So if we were to break up the family tree of ZDDPs, firstly, we would define them by whether they are aryl or alkyl. So, you know, with an aromatic compound or if it's a straight chain. And then among the alkyls, we divide them into primary and secondary ZDDPs. Now, the aryl ones tend to form anti-wear films slower than the alkyl ones. And for that reason, they have seen diminishing use over the years. The primary ZDDPs tend to volatilize off faster than the secondary ones do. And that's why they've started to decrease in use as well. One of the main reasons for this is because, you know, you'll probably be aware that sulfur and phosphorus poison catalysts downstream of the engine. So if we have something that volatilizes off more, it's not performing anti-wear function. It's instead ending up in the exhaust. Specifically, it's ending up in the catalytic converter and it is potentially hindering the catalytic converter's performance. So we get both a reduction in anti-wear performance and a problem downstream. So that's why you know, secondary ZDDPs have kind of become the heart of most engine oil formulations. But it's not even that simple because when you compare secondary and primary ZDDPs, it seems that secondary ZDDPs form higher friction anti-wear films, right? And so that's detrimental to our fuel economy performance. Not only that, but you can't consider ZDDP in isolation. You have to look at how does it work 
what we call synergistically with other additive compounds. And one of the main ones that it tends to work really well with is something called molybdenum diphiocarbamate, or we just call it MOLY for short. Sometimes you'll see it um, shortened down to MODTC. Right? Now, molybdenum diphiocarbamate is also a multifunctional additive that performs kind of anti wear slash friction reduction properties as well as antioxidant properties. And it tends to work really well with ZDDPs. Now, the literature that I've read is a little bit mixed as to whether it works better with a primary or a secondary ZDDP, but from what I've seen, it seems that the friction reducing action of an MODTC, um, it performs better when paired with a primary ZDDP, right? Now, all of this is really kind of in the weeds. Ultimately, for um, someone who is using an engine oil, you don't really need to know whether it's a primary or a ZDDP in the mix. All you need to know is that the oil works in your particular application. What you'll practically find is that in a lot of different engine oils now, it'll be a bit of a mix. There'll be some primary and some secondary ZDDP, and you sort of get the benefits and the drawbacks of both.